We know the difference between clients and servers, but how do we communicate between the two? Let's say each player has a ready up button and the server needs to know when each player presses the button. To do this, we can use a remote event instance. We place it in the replicated storage so both the servers and clients can access it. Next, we'll place a local script inside our button and listen for the mouse button one click event, which is fired when the button is left clicked or tapped. Inside our function, let's refer to the remote event and use the fire server method, which will fire an event on the server when the button is clicked. Next, in a server script, we can refer to the remote event and connect on server events to a function, as we want to listen for when the event is fired. Here, we would then perform actions on the server based on the information that has been sent from the client. Let's output a message so we can confirm it works. When the player presses the button, the server outputs our message, showing that it's received the signal. Remote events always automatically pass the player instance as the first argument, so the server can identify who fired the event. As shown in the Engine API, the player instance contains a name property, so we can use that to output the player's name. Remote events also allow you to pass your own data to the server as arguments. For example, we can add parameters to the function that handles the event, and then send these values as arguments when firing from the local script. If we output these values and test the game, we can see that everything is passed over, no matter the data type. We can also use remote events to transfer information from the server to the client, which follows a similar process. For example, we can make a remote event that sends a set of values to players when they join the server. The player's service contains the player added event, which is fired when new players join, and passes the player instance as an argument. So when a new player joins, we can refer to the remote event and use fire clients to pass information to their client. We need to specify the player to send the information to, so we pass the player as the first argument. We can then pass any other arguments such as these values. In a local script, we can then listen for on client events to be fired and output the values we receive. Note that the player instance is not automatically passed as an argument here, as the client can already access this information. When we test our script, all data is outputted on the client when the player joins, meaning our scripts work as expected. Now let's say we want the client to call a function on the server, which can then return information back to the client. For this, we can use a remote function, which is another instance we can add to the replicated storage. In our local script, we refer to the remote function instance and invoke the function, which just means to call it. We can also pass any arguments we want like these. In our server script, we then refer to the remote function instance and assign the onServer invoke property to a function, which can be a variable reference or just the function itself. The remote function passes the player instance by default, as well as all of our arguments that we passed. We can use this information and then return any data back to the client. Just like with standard functions, we can assign the return values as variables and use these afterwards. And as you might have guessed, remote functions can be invoked from the server too. We can call the invoke client method from the server with the player instance as an argument alongside any other arguments. We can then assign the onClient invoke property to a function in our local script and then return information back to the server script. Now, as we mentioned in the last episode, cheaters can access and modify anything stored on the client. Because remote functions and events are accessible from the client, a cheater can see all information being transferred between the client and server. Additionally, they can fire events, invoke functions, and pass any values they would like. As a result, you need to be very careful and make sure that your remote functions and events don't allow for cheaters to cause damage to your game. For example, let's say your game staff have access to an admin panel that lets them kick players from the game. When they press the kick button, a local script from their client fires this remote event with the player's name to kick. Rather than just kicking the specified player, the server script must first check that the request has come from an admin. This is because a cheat can fire any remote event or function from their client, even without access to the admin panel GUI. So, the server script needs to make sure that the remote event has been fired by a trusted player. The player instance is guaranteed to be correct, as cheaters have no control over that, so we can check the player's name before kicking the specified user. You should always handle remotes under the assumption that all values provided by a client might not be from your own scripts. And so you need to ensure there isn't anything a cheater can do to your remote functions and events that would compromise your game's security. Now, when firing a remote event, the script skips past the line of code right after firing the event, before waiting for the server to receive it. However, when invoking a remote function, the script waits until it receives a response, just like when calling any other function. When the server invokes a function on a client, a cheater can make the function never stop running, which would cause the server script to wait forever. This could potentially break your game if it relies on receiving a response. As a result, you should generally only use remote events when transferring information from the server to the client. Now, be sure to play around to make sure you've got the hang of remote instances, and when you're ready, the final episode is waiting.